The average Canadian spends over an hour a day commuting to and from work. Over an hour! Commuting time is so slow because our country's one million kilometers of roads are clogged up by people who don't know the rules. Uh, can, no, I know, it's weird. After phone. The purpose of our program is to get traffic flowing again. But if everyone in the country was as lousy as the folks on our show, we wouldn't have a hope. This is Canada's worst driver. First episode this season. Out of the way! The worst motorists in the country. I'm getting there. Got themselves to the driver rehabilitation center. Here. We assess their skills. Oh. And it turned out. worse than we thought they were. See, that's why I leave. The carnage and wreckage. From St. Catharines, Ontario, our first nominee is... Don't tell me how to drive. Dale. Whose driving is so bad, she has the dubious honor... Oh, shit. ...of being our most nominated person ever. My name is John. Linda. Trevor. Sam. Amanda. Greg. And I nominated my neighbor, Dale, as Canada's worst driver. What does this mean? It's a red light. Oh. The next Canada's worst driver candidate is Scott, a self-confessed drunk driver. If I'm driving drunk, then the cruise control's set. <laughs> Scott's insurance premiums have become so high Whoa, dude, stop sign, stop sign. Yeah, that was a stop sign. He can't pay them. So to drive... What the f***? You didn't even slow down. Scott relies on his roommate's insurance. Danny is taking a big chance. Oh, 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 smoke. Taking the risk for Scott's insurance... Dude! ...is something I suggested Danny stop doing. Oh, no, no, I don't want to stop insuring him. I wanted to stop driving like a maniac. <laughs> From Collingwood, Ontario, the next nominee is... Look at me, how I'm shaking. Paul, a lifelong motorcyclist who's afraid in a car. I don't like cars. I don't like fans. I want to ride my motorcycle. Paul was nominated as Canada's worst car driver by his biker buddy, Tommy, who's a stickler for the rules. Signal before you turn! From our nation's capital, the next breathlessly bad candidate is Learner Lance. Lance is so bad behind the wheel, he often gets physically ill. According to Gilles. Lance's best friend. His breathing gets very erratic. In his rehab center assessment drive... <laughs> Lance threw up. Reversing makes you throw up. <laughs> The next Canada's Worst Driver nominee is... Diane. A mother of six who is slow. I got a ticket on the highway for going too slow. Diane's daughter, Rayanne, really wants her to speed up. 
This is why I've nominated her for the show. The next Canada's Worst Driver nominee hails originally from Zimbabwe. D is a speed freak now living in Montreal. Ah, uh, Dean, you're gonna kill me, man. Yo, yo, yo. Easy. Oh, my God. Brian is Dean's frightened friend. Dean recently got a speeding ticket for over $800. I'm a good driver because I haven't killed anybody yet. The next bad driver, Brad, is under the watchful eye of his wife, Donna. Brad has not been allowed to drive our vehicle um, in close to two years. Donna likes to control their car from the passenger seat. Please don't f up my car. Don't ride the clutch. Now you're dragging the engine. Don't do that. The next nominee is... Jamie, a mother who recently quit her job because she couldn't handle the commute. I don't know what I'm doing. Jamie never knows what to do behind the wheel. What am I doing now, Eric? Eric is Jamie's patient husband. Eric, I'm going to have a spaz attack. Like, help me. Want to know something crazy? In every province of this country, people with a normal driver's license can operate a vehicle that is up to 12 meters long, provided it weighs less than 11 tons. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to get into this beast and reverse it. Baroom! through some really intimidating big steel things. All they have to do is reverse from here to here. Wish me luck. The trick to this is going slowly and using your mirrors. The course has a slight steady bend in it. So, once you get the mobile home lined up, she should kind of just go along. It's one thing to say, it's another thing to do. What I'm doing now is heading for a collision. Mm. To get realigned, I need to do an S-turn. I go forwards to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I steer hard to the right. That's a better angle. Now that I'm in the sweet spot, reversing's a joke. Nerve-wracking, yes, but in the grand scheme of things, not that bad. Three minutes after I began, I'm done. Now, let's see how Canada's worst drivers do. Seatbelts must be worn at all times. Welcome. Enjoy. Take a seat you like. All right. Aren't you glad you're not on that bus? Speed Freak Dean quickly gets out of line. It's too close, Dave. I knew it was too close. Dean needs to shift the entire vehicle to his right. But he isn't familiar with the repositioning S-turn. You want to you wanna do a, one of these? Dean snakes the vehicle forward correctly. Okay, straight back, buddy. You're laughing. And he's able to reverse through the sweet spot. <laughs> the repositioning S-turn makes tough reversing possible. That's tough, man. Jamie never uses her side mirrors. I don't know what I'm supposed to see you up the mirrors. See, you, want to see. you want to see the side of your van. Jamie isn't seeing the side of the vehicle because she isn't using her mirrors. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold, hold it. it. Hold it, hold it. Come on, Jay. You got it. Jamie will get it. 
as soon as she learns the S turn. Hard left and then hard right. Atta girl. Atta girl. Holy good. It is good from here on in. What's in here? No, she's on it. Jamie should be a little bit proud. I still, I think I still have a lot to learn. When we come back, <laughs> Lance cries. And across the country, lovers of aging mobile homes will cry. Wanna buy a camper van? Don't cheat. Outside at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. The country's worst motorists are learning to use their side mirrors by reversing a huge mobile home through big steel barriers. Inside the Driver Rehabilitation Center studio, our four experts are watching the action. Philippe Letourneau is our high-speed instructor. With a vehicle that size, you don't want to go fast because you can make a lot of damage. Peter Mellor is our basic driving instructor. Dr. Lauren Kennedy-Smith is our resident psychologist. And Cam Woolley, a former Ontario Provincial Police Sergeant, is our legal expert. I always find it strange that you get a license driving a smart car, then you hop into one of these things. Same license. At the end of our series, these experts will help decide who is Canada's worst driver. When Scott begins reversing, he can't see his passenger side mirror. Hey, yo, can you move, dude? Scott wisely pulls forward and does an S turn to realign. You got it, buddy! That's it! Then, Scott is in the sweet spot. That's awesome. It's not as awesome as it should be. Stop when you hear scraping. Most of our students hit a lot of things. Yeah, about it. But they don't want to. Scott is different. I'm just a guy who likes to drive crazy. Brad is next to reverse. Remember, this challenge is all about using your mirrors. But Brad is only using one. Slow down here, slow down! <laughs> While Brad stares unrelentingly at his driver's side mirror, he's getting conflicting advice about the other side. Turn the wheel a little bit to right the there, left. That, that's a enough. A tiny bit to the left. That's enough. This multiple choice... No, he's not gonna make it. ...is making Brad's head swim. Yeah. He's gonna hit it again. He sure is. Every time. When Dean explains how to reposition with an S turn... To the left and then to the right. Like a snake, you know? Brad gets everything lined up, and he finishes before he explodes. That's awesome. This should raise Brad's confidence. Dude, you drove a RV. That's not bad. Motorcyclist Paul is up next. Come over my way, my way. My way, my way, my way. You mean my way. Paul's way of getting through this course is pushing his way through. Am I around it? No. Oh, Paul is a little pushy. Yeah, I'm ready to graduate. Dale doesn't understand the S turn. Turn to the left and then yank it to the right, like a snake. 
Following Dean's advice inside the vehicle and her nephew John's advice outside the vehicle. Do your ass, Dale. And Scott's advice in the back of the vehicle. A little to the left. Keep her coming, though. Dale finishes without really making a single decision. Head on, awesome. Dale learned nothing about mirrors. You see how you got to use your mirrors now? Yep. Diane makes it halfway without hitting anything. Great job, Mom! Diane does eventually hit. You're touching something? But she doesn't cry about it. Remember that snake? Diane does an X turn. Perfect. But she's still a little too far to the right. Mom, stop! Oh, you're gonna you're gonna take this mirror out. Ooh, that's gonna leave a mark. Diane's apparently not going to let obstacles get in her way. Whoa! Because we're at the end already. Already? Already. Wow. Diane is getting better. Did you learn how to use the mirrors? I did. That's good, eh? Lance starts by snagging the bumper. <sighs> okay. You can do it, Lance! I don't know what way the wheel is right now, if it's straight or what. <sighs> I don't know what to do, man. He should use his mirrors! I'm hitting something. And he shouldn't take advice from Dale. Go forward. No, don't go forward. Just, just go turn. forward. This is sickening. Oh my God. Really sickening. <clears throat> After 15 minutes of destructive driving, Lance hits his breaking point. Always check your mirrors, okay, my friend? <laughs> hey, Lance, don't worry about it, buddy. Yeah. You're trying. You're doing good. Everybody yeah, you're doing good, okay, man. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> you're fine, man. One or two minutes? Yeah. Get a grip, man. Get a grip. Let's go. Come on. Get a Grip, buddy. You're a grown man. Let's go. I'm a grown man. So you gotta try, and you're trying. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh. I hate to bring this up again, but to your left. Don't do it to your left. Reversing makes Lance vomit. When I lost it, um, Paul was right there to tell me to shut the up and push it into gear and stop crying. When we come back, <gasps> we learn whether or not our drivers know where their wheels are. Do it, I'm a idiot. Where you're headed. I mean, do you actually know the direction you're taking? To see if Canada's worst drivers know where they're going in their life, their next challenge is pretty straightforward. In fact, it's straightforward, and then it's reverse. I guess the only question is, will they stay on track? All right, so I need to get perfectly lined up with the course before I'm on the course. The point of this challenge is to see if our bad drivers know where their wheels are. Holy moly! And to see if they know where their front bumper is. To test that, drivers must touch this stop sign without knocking it and the garbage cans over. Oh, geez, I saw them shake. <laughs> Reversing. Mm. 
requires confidence. In my mirrors, I can't see the rear wheels. And when I look out the back, I can't see anything, like not even a bit of track. Keeping the steering wheel locked should drive the car straight back. Take some visual references just in case. And go. The strap installed under the car is there just in case anyone needs to get hoisted out of our puddle. But maybe that won't happen. This is actually one of those courses that's not as bad as it originally seems. Piece of cake. I can drive in a straight line. Running the rails took me just under two minutes. Now, let's see how Canada's worst drivers do. Brad is up first. Get her lined up, my love. Brad never gets truly lined up. And when he hits the course, he's barely on it. Okay. Brad steering hurt Donna's shoulder. I knew it. I'm an idiot. Speed freak Dean is up next. Let's get busy, mommy. Dean starts quickly and quickly fails. <sighs> Dean barely knows which continent his wheels are in. Africa, man. Why you drive like this? Jamie doesn't like the premise of this challenge. <gasps> oh my god, are you kidding me? Jamie heads for the ramp, but that's not straight on. No, but I will see her straight. Straight up. If more drivers knew where their wheels are, do I just guess? There'd be a lot less accidents. <laughs> oh my god! Jamie has poor spatial awareness. I wasn't as straight as what I thought. Scott starts by touching our garage door. Touch. Okay, know what the car feels like now. And thanks to a long run up, Scott is perfectly aligned with the rails. He drives quickly to the stop sign, which he successfully kisses. And then he goes too far. Headed backwards, Scott loses track of his wheels, and Danny loses track of his patience. Oh, oh my head! <laughs> Scott's laughing, but Danny's not. Yeah, huh, this is. You did a good job, Scott. Thanks, man. Yeah, Mr. Big Shot, eh? Diane also makes it onto the rails. But instead of just lightly pecking the stop sign, she really plants one on it. In parking lots, beware of Diane. I failed. Yeah. Motorcyclist Paul is next. Okay. Paul's driving issues involve other traffic. Don't fear. Alone on this course, you gotta be close. Paul stays calm and knows where his bumper is. Holy man, I made it. And backing up, Paul remains calm and clearly knows where his wheels are. That's good, eh? Paul is done driving for today. I was good, eh? Now we can go for a beer. Dale is up next. Oh, we're done. Dale doesn't know where her wheels are. You sure do. You don't, or before. you wouldn't have went in the water. Well, yeah. When Lance gets over his nerves. <laughs> he gets on the rails. But way before he makes it to the stop sign, Lance throws it in reverse. Stop, stop, stop. How close to the stop sign are you? I'm, uh... Pretty, uh almost I'm, touching I'm, it? I'm almost touching it, yeah. Almost touching it. Almost touching it. I tell Lance to get as close as he possibly can. 
And then I can't go any further. Put it in park. Put it in park. Lance clearly doesn't know where his bumper is. You, you, you're not even close to the stop sign. You got like seven feet. All right. Okay? You actually thought you were this close to that? Yeah. You're not. I'm not sure why Lance is always so overwhelmed. I think it is the fear of me being Canada's worst driver that's giving me a lot of that, uh, that overwhelming feeling. When we come back... Ready for your challenge? I am... What's the challenge? The challenge is to do a shoulder check and then steer around the stop sign. A bad sitting position can create bad driving. So... Philippe Letourneau is about to evaluate and correct the sitting position of Canada's worst drivers. That's your normal seating position? That's how I drive, yes. Oh boy, we have huh? a few issues here. Okay, what? <laughs> Let's start with your left foot. It should go on the inappropriately named footrest. It's not really there to rest your foot. It's for you to brace yourself into the seat. To position the seat, press the brake all the way in. Your leg should still have a slight bend in it. Paul's doesn't. No, it's straight. It's no. straight. Yeah. Now there's a cement wall coming, and we hit. Something will snap. All right. Could be your knee, okay. your ankle. All right. Even worse, could be your hip. To know if your backrest is positioned properly, you're too far from your control. Put your shoulders against the seat, then reach forward. Your wrist should be on the top of the wheel. Now you should think about adjusting the mirrors so they reflect the traffic around you. You don't think of mirrors. They're not helpful for you. No? Well, if I need to see the kids in the back. To hold the wheel correctly, your hands should be directly across from each other. Line 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 that's good to know. Thank you. This position is important for steering and driver safety. This way your hands are never, never, never in front of that airbag. Or... Or I get this. Like yeah, that, exactly. In the face. It will. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense? It does. Philippe teaches the bad drivers how to check their blind spots by simply turning their heads. You should never take your shoulder off this seat. Where were your shoulders again? Off the seat. Don't need to turn your shoulder, just turn your head. You heard the man. Only turn your head. Hey, learn something new every day. Every vehicle ever made has blind spots somewhere. So to see everything that you want to see while driving, you have to use your mirrors and you have to turn your head. However, some bad drivers create their own blind spots, which don't allow them to see properly, well, no matter where they look. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to check their blind spots. How does Paul see anything? <laughs> I worry a little bit about you for this challenge. Okay. You probably have more blind spots than most. Yeah. What with the fashion you keep. Paul will now demonstrate our check your blind spot challenge by driving down this lane at 80 kilometers an hour. These signs have either red circles or green circles on their other side. When you pass those colored signs, look at both of them. Okay, all right. Okay, my friend. When Paul does look back, he has to go around our stop sign to whichever side has the green circles. Go, go, you tell me when go, it's 80, go, Tommy, go, okay. Go, go. For Paul's shoulder check challenge, he should go here, to his right. Okay, one, two. Paul learned his lesson. Keeping your shoulders square here, that helped me. That helped me. <laughs> Jamie is up next. Scared. 
Well, I'll slow down. I'm half scared too. When Jamie turns her head, she also turns the wheel. <laughs> Jamie fails our check your blind spot challenge. I can't seem to um, look. Lance will have to turn this way around the stop sign. Why aren't you doing the fireworks, man? All right. All right. Here comes Lance. Will he make the turn to his right? From outside the vehicle, it looked like Lance was asleep at the wheel. But in fact, Lance was in there looking for a safe exit until he focused on our stop sign. It's actually called target fixation. They see the problem, but they don't look for any solution. Lance didn't see into his blind spot. I just uh, put on the brakes and I went through the stop sign. That's what I did. Dean will have to steer to his right. When he passes the green circles, he sees them and steers accordingly. I did it. I did it. Dean did it. Brad is going to use his ninja luck. <laughs> On Brad's attempt, good boy, good boy. His left lane is green, but his speed is over 90. I should have gone that way, son of a. Brad didn't have time to see his blind spot. I was going too fast. Dale has to go to her right. Dale looks all over the place, but sees nothing. So she goes to the right around our stop sign. But I missed it. she thinks that turning right was wrong. <gasps> Darn. What Dale doesn't know is that she was supposed to turn right. I think I could learn this. I think I could learn this. A couple of weeks, you could learn it. Not a couple of weeks. <laughs> Diane never drives 80 kilometers an hour. I think I'm gonna be sick. Get out if you need to puke. Diane also never shoulder checks. 70, 80, and shoulder check. I don't even want to talk about it. Diane, focused on our stop sign. It's normal that your eyes get attracted to it, but you have to find a solution after that. It was just like, I just couldn't do it. It was like, it was just too hard. When we come back, two years of you driving like a maniac. Danny can't take it anymore. You're gonna kill somebody. After five years of rehabilitating Canada's worst drivers, this year's nominee, Scott. Oh my God, Scott. Is the most reckless person we've ever dealt with. We'll die if we crash. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It would be tragic if Scott died. Holy Who would drive his son, Isaac, around? He's almost 16 months old, and uh, he's the reason why I need to uh, not drive like a lunatic all the time. Because you can't ruin a precious face like this. Scott says he drives safely when Isaac's on board. But when he's not... I'm a good drunk driver. I've driven well over 200 kilometers per hour. 
I've been suspended several times and I've never actually stopped driving. But I probably hit this guy's car at like 50. Did you just drive off? I changed my tire and then I drove off. In order to drive, when I was out, off on house arrest, I, I got a friend to memorize his name and his date and all that sort of stuff, and then I, I drove as him for, for a number of years. Um, I wasn't even going to mention that because it's so illegal. He got pulled over drunk driving back from the thing. He didn't have a license at the time, so he pretended to be one of our friends. Hey, yeah, my name's... Da -da -da -da. According to Scott, that friend didn't know he'd been convicted of drunk driving until he received a letter from the police. He had to pay him off. A couple thousand dollars I had to pay this guy. Why does Scott think he can get away with saying all this? Cops are very gullible, um, especially city police. This morning, ex-cop Cam called the Calgary City Police to tell them all about Scott. Basically, he's telling us that he's been driving under suspension while under house arrest, also claiming another person was convicted of impaired driving in his name. Yes. As far as the law is concerned, Scott is innocent until proven guilty. As far as we're concerned, it's time for his shoulder check challenge. Hey, we should be good to go. When Scott does go, he speeds and doesn't have enough time to see the green sign over his right shoulder. Well, I failed that one. <laughs> Scott laughs it off. But Danny feels grossly disrespected. What'd you, th what'd you think about that? I'm just not gonna talk? I'm done, dude. I don't understand why. F you. Hollywood. Wow. I came here to f try and get you help, Scott. I came here because you're dangerous and you're gonna kill somebody in five okay, years and, and everybody agrees on that and all of a sudden you do can this you, one can you test. tone it down like no two years of you driving like a maniac and looking over at me with a smile you're gonna that smile yeah that's the one my 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 teammate my my support uh, danny is uh ferociously upset with me danny is so upset he's canceling the insurance policy scott uses to drive um, I'd like to cancel my policy, effective tomorrow, please. And just like that, the wheels that Scott uses to speed around in are uninsured. It's cancelled as of tomorrow. She can't drive the car around anymore. People make mistakes, and you can make one. And if you're doing 200 kilometers an hour, when you make that very simple mistake, you're gonna kill somebody. When we come back, Scott learns what Cam has done. Uh, reporting to the police. It's time for our experts to speak with Canada's worst drivers to see what they're learning from our challenges. Starting with Paul. I learned how to sit in a car properly, how to adjust everything properly from your steering wheel to your legs. Lance learned what everyone around him already knows. I've learned I, I might possibly be Canada's worst driver. And Diane learned she likes learning. I'd like to learn a little bit more. Maybe get up to 80. Let's get you up to 100. <sighs> oh. oh, I'm just sweating. Oh. Overconfident Scott just learned that his friend Danny won't cover his insurance anymore. Scott can't afford his own insurance, so he's looking for... I mean, another sucker friend in the meantime. No, man, no, man. The whole idea I'm of not this... I'm getting in trouble. I have, to, I have to slow down, so no, I don't get tickets. No, you're missing the point. If you can't afford your insurance, you have only one option, and that's to not drive. I have to drive better. I drive good for five years and then insure myself again. I don't think you're understanding, Andrew. You, you have one option here. If you're going to drive, you have to do it legal, period. Then, Scott learns his on-camera criminal admissions have been reported. Reported to the police? As a veteran ex-cop, Cam still carries a badge. And it's not for nostalgia. This badge comes with the responsibility of enforcing the law. Well, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen when you start talking about this stuff? 
I'm obligated to share this information with the police service where you live. And in fact, I would think that you'll be getting a knock at the door fairly shortly. How do you expect me to, to learn anything? Oh, I think that if you don't learn from this, you are really got your ears plugged. Man, you're dangerous. You're drinking and driving. You're driving around on insurance. You're going to kill somebody or maim somebody, paralyze a family, and that would make you pay for life. So you're saying I'm not learning? That's exactly what we're saying. Scott's behavior at our rehabilitation center has made his friend Danny start calling him Hollywood. F you, Hollywood. Seriously. You're Hollywood. You think you're the greatest thing on earth ever since you got invited onto Canada's Worst Driver. I'm enjoying myself yeah. out here. He's like, last night we're standing out back talking to people, and he's like, they make me go in front of the panel. I'm going to tell them I haven't learned anything. So you're saying I'm not learning? Scott learned that Danny's generosity has run out, and he has been kicked out of rehab. I don't think right now he's realizing that that was the best thing for him. Yeah. But I hope in the long term, you'll, uh, you'll, he will realize that. I hope, really hope. I hope Scott doesn't think he should keep driving. He can convince himself and anyone else of anything he wants. This is what this young man does best. He can convince himself of anything he wants. He, well, he will believe that he walked away from here in some way tre treated unfairly. The doctor is exactly right. So, basically, they're like, yeah, we like the fact that you're about to change, but, uh, but you haven't yet. You're a dumbass, and we're going to tell on you. All right, that's super mature. Go Canada. The idea of the show is to help drivers, and I think we've just helped drivers in Alberta. Driving like a jerk just isn't cool anymore. I think most Canadians feel that way. The demographics, Cam, also are that everyone knows someone who's been killed by someone driving recklessly. Most of our bad drivers are expecting Scott to graduate tonight. But... We here at the rehab center deal with only valid drivers, and Scott, you're no longer a valid driver. You're just a guy who doesn't have any insurance. So I'll just give you back this piece of plastic. After all, it's just a piece of plastic. That's all it is. You can have that. You can take that on your way as this cab comes to pick you up. So, Danny, you're free to go as well. This taxi's for you. Thank you for all your help, sir. Thank you, sir. You've done a good thing. I really hope you live a long, safe life, because your son deserves that. When we met Scott, he was the most unrepentant bad driver. Like, whoa! What the f We'd ever come across. <laughs> If I'm driving drunk, then the cruise control is set. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Mania. When Scott drove himself to our rehab center, he broke a driving law 36 times. Whoa. In a span of just 30 minutes. Whoa, dude, see? Like, was that necessary? Was that a bit dangerous? Yes. Stop it. Why did you come to rehab? He came to rehab came to rehab show to every single rehab. one of you guys up. <laughs> it's not going to work out the way you planned. It's got on the cool on TV part. Wow, about to cry. Right. Shouldn't hear. Now that he has no insurance and has been reported to the police, Scott is shedding tears. Well, life's unfair. So I suppose this can be as well. Scott is really lucky to be alive. I just will wake him up, yeah. man. I'm hoping so this wake him up. Three and a half months after filming, Scott hasn't been criminally charged with anything. Who knows if he ever will be. <laughs> On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. Dale experiments with different methods of getting unstuck from a mud pit. I'm no scientist, but this doesn't seem to be working. Lance shows off his stick shift driving ability. Oh. And 
breaking into a corner, almost breaks deep. 